be great. Okay, so the idea that I'm passionate about spreading is getting people to bring their whole selves, their passion, their interest, everything to their work. And the way we're going to start today, and we call that engagement, the way that we do that is we get people engaged. So how do we get people to do that? Well, I, I first learned about this in high school. That's me in the suit. You can't tell because I actually had hair back then. But that's me fixing a giant lighthouse. When I was in high school, I liked to build things, electronic things, mechanical things. And rather than being labeled a geek and kind of pushed to the side, my peers decided to make me the technical officer in 1981 of my student government. And my job was to put technology, electronics, mechanics, in things to make things more interesting and so we could win contests against the other classes. So here I am on the, on the senior class float. We had a working lighthouse. Down in the bottom left is a giant three-foot clam that opened and closed using a Chevy windshield wiper. So that was, that was my job. Whether it was hooking my brother's guitar amplifier to a cassette, not a track, mind you, high tech, we went cassette tape deck to electric eye so that there was Christmas music in the hall during hall decorating contest, that was my job. And if you remember back to high school or you have high schoolers now, fitting in to high school is a hard thing, right? And especially if you have a talent or a skill that's not something, it's reading, writing, or arithmetic. So this is how I fit in. This is how my classmates let me fit in. And I learned early that if you can engage people and get their passion, then you can really contribute. Fast forward, this is 1997. I always seem to be in a suit in these pictures. This is a tuxedo. This is at the Detroit Auto Show. And we did a project for Michelin. And Michelin's problem was that they were the only non-automotive company at the Detroit Auto Show. So 750,000 people come. And if you had the choice of seeing a new concept car, or the new car that's rolling out, or go learn about tires. Guess which one everybody skipped? Nobody ever came to the Michelin booth. So we happened to have a guy at work that was really interested in old cars, collecting cars, and we had a guy that was really interested in dynamics. So we told Michelin we would create them a virtual Dodge Viper, which was the, the new tire fit on the Dodge Viper. And we put people in a head-mounted display, gave them a steering wheel, and allowed them to look around and drive in three-dimensional space on Road Atlanta as modeled by satellite data and got them engaged and taught them about tires. And they went from zero people to a two and a half hour line wait for 21 days. And on this night, we were actually on entertainment tonight. So if you ever see the clip, that's my foot in the lower corner. So part of my body has achieved 15 seconds of fame. It worked so well that the next year when Michelin turned 100, we built them a time machine. So now this is the engineer's dream, right? It's a motion platform, force feedback, 200 pounds up your butt of thrust when you're moving through 1906 France, and we let you go to different time periods and actually experience the difference in tires. So we got to engage all this stuff that we normally don't do at work. And in fact, because we knew we had lines, we actually put a, a platform with 10 transducers to make you feel the road as you stood there waiting for your chance to see what you saw on the screen. And when they did surveys, they realized that people got the message way, way better than they would have with a pamphlet or a, just somebody telling you about a tire. So by engaging our passion, for the stuff that we wanted to do, we are able to engage people in the US and eventually went to 13 countries. That's what we talked about about engagement. Here are 212 student scientists, complete with black corner and glasses, every one of them. And every one of them has picked something they're passionate about. And every one of them wants you to come to the Science Expo and show you the difference in cost between feeding a meat-eating dinosaur and a vegetarian dinosaur. Or to let you try their no-snow sled which doesn't require snow, and you can sled all year around, which in Raleigh is a great thing, because we never get snow. The interesting thing to me is some of these kids, this one here is my daughter, who's second grade, they're not freshmen in college. Three years from now, they're gonna come looking for a job, and they're gonna come to you. Are you ready, am I ready, to engage their whole selves? They wanna change the world. Are we gonna let them, or are we gonna beat it out of them and make them part of the corporate culture that isn't? That's what's getting engaged. If we wanna do that, if we really wanna call ourselves leaders, then we have to do this because leadership is the service of painting a vision and then engaging people to allow them to contribute in a way that's meaningful to the organization and to themselves. It's the only way we get to places like the moon or things that we only dreamt of before. So if we all agree that that's something we want to do, how do you do it? So Monday when you go back to work, what are you going to do to get people engaged? I think there are three things that you can start with. Number one is the concept of appropriate fun. So appropriate fun, you know, we have some groups of people, let's go off and do a, uh, a mountain climbing class or a ropes class or everybody here is going to do a talent show and you're going to perform for everybody. Then unless that's something your staff really likes to do, it's usually not that much fun. Every place that I've ever worked that contributed and every organization that I work with now has an element of fun, but it's appropriate fun. So let me give you an example. 
many of you are probably familiar with David Allen and getting things done. He had a, a summit two years ago, the GCD summit. And I was on one of the panels. And we decided the morning of the panel, not ahead of time, but just the morning of the panel, we were going to do a song. Because we were pretty sure nobody else was going to do a song. And these are pretty serious people. One guy is one of the head fundraisers for the World Hunger Project. One guy does communications plans for Fortune 100 companies. One person is the head coach for David Allen. And then there's me. So three out of the four of these people you need to take seriously, right? These are serious people. And we got up and we told Danny, the moderator, when you're done introducing the August panel, say, I think it kind of reminds me of a song. And then we stood up and sang a song called Green Acres to the tune of Green Acres. And every lyric in that song had some nuance that only the audience would understand. And so they loved it because they were on the inside. It was appropriate fun. If we could just stood up and sang Green Acres, they would have just said, you guys are weird. But because we involved them appropriately, it was fun for them. So find the appropriate way at your office. If I flash this up, I can immediately tell who the technical people. We have a couple over here, excellent. This translated as roses are red, violets are blue, our favorite bases are base 16 and two. And this kills that electrical engineering seminar. <laughs> but it's not that funny for you all. That's the appropriate, it's for them, it's completely appropriate. So do things that are appropriately fun. The second thing you need to do is figure out how do I take these people's passions and apply it to some value that my organization can provide. So I love the example of, of Dave Myers, who is a, a uh, engineer at WL4 company, makes Gore-Tex and jackets and stuff. And in addition to working in the cardiac department, coding through cardiac, he realized as an amateur musician that they could apply a coding to guitar strings to make the guitar strings last a lot longer. Guitar strings tend to degrade because of the oils in your hand. And so for three years, he worked kind of underground, got a couple other people who were passionate about it, and then he went to the management and said, we've got a great idea for guitar strings. Now, if you're in business school, the first thing you learn is W.O. Gore is not in the music business. They're not even related to the music business. So they could have said, that's not our core business, we're not going to do that. But instead, they said, these guys are passionate, and we think we can actually make some money off this. And now, the Elixir guitar string outsells its competition two to one. When's the last time you took somebody's musical passion in your chemical business and made a product that actually made you a profit. Closer to home, we have a group of people in my office that loves uh, senior citizens, retirees. And as technical people, we also realize that there's a lot of technology that our parents, when they move into retirement communities, can't use because the technology gets in the way. So we've created this thing called Marvelous Moments, which allows them in their easy chair using a Wiimote to Skype their grandchildren, to look at photos online, to watch TV, to take somebody with a cell phone to the camera and they can take them to a wedding or graduation they can't go to, all from their easy chair. And we're deploying this prototype in two retirement communities here locally. And the point is we have people who are really interested in working with this class of people. We're an IT company. We usually don't do this sort of stuff, but to us we realize, look on the web, once every seven seconds somebody retires. It's a great market for us to be in. So we can tie their passion into our product. The next thing you need to do, the last thing you need to do, is something you've probably heard before, especially if you're in the creative field, which is taking risks. A lot of companies, especially in the economy right now, are eliminating risk. We need to increase the risk. You need to make it so people can take risks and fail forward faster. They need to be comfortable with doing things, because sooner or later, they're going to hit something that they haven't seen before, and if they're comfortable with that, you will excel, and you will succeed, and you can actually change the world. Here's a personal example for me. In 2007, I was diagnosed with a brain tumor. I did an MRI on Thursday. On Friday, I, they said, you gotta go see the doc. On Monday, I saw the doc, and the next week, they had me on the operating table. And they said, it's a fairly standard brain tumor. Uh, the problem is that it's surrounding your vertebral artery and your spinal cord. So if we nick either one of those, you know, you're pretty much gonna check out. And I said, I'd appreciate it if you would hit either one of those. Right. And so they got me on the table, they opened me up, and realized that it wasn't what they expected. In fact, there are only five tumors like mine known that have existed yet. So there is no one, two, three for this. Luckily, I have Dr. Alan Freeman, who's the chief neurosurgery at Duke. He looks at this and says there isn't a one, two, three. He's got to switch over way past snap, clap, stomp. Here's a guy who's open an operating table. We've got to save his life, and there's no procedure. So I'm glad that he is tops in this field. I'm glad that he has advanced his field. He's passionate because he takes a diamond-coated drill pit. And for the next five and a half hours, he goes to this hard substance and just shards it off until every shard falls away, not hitting anything. And now my kids have a dad 
and my wife has a husband, and I'm here talking to you because somebody was passionate, took a different way, took a flat slam stomp instead of a one, two, three, and I'm here. And that's the idea, I think. That's what we need to be doing. We might not be brain surgeons, we might not save everybody's life, but we can sure change the world if we can get people to bring their whole selves to work. And that's the idea that I think is worth spreading. Hopefully what we talked about today will help you do that. And in your journey to do that, I wish you the very best of luck and Godspeed. Thank you.